Hi everyone, it's Max here for Ride Music and today we're going to take a little walk down memory lane and have a look at each of the winners of the Best Newcomer Award at the MOBOs in the 2000s. There were four winners of the award before the year 2000 and they were Piece by Piece, Shola Ammer, Lyndon David Hall and Kelly LaRock but the turn of the millennium marked a significant step in the commercial rise of black music in the UK so we figured we'd start from there. We'll also show you the beaten nominees in each year for some extra nostalgia. This is just part one, which is covering the years 2000 to 2004, and we'll be putting out part two in the coming days. Let us know in the comments if you think the mobiles were successful in predicting the next generation of stars to come out of the UK, and make sure you like and subscribe to Ride Music for more videos like this one. And hit that bell so you get notified as soon as part two drops. Right, let's take a deep dive and see what happened to the Mobile Awards Best Newcomers of the 2000s, part one. 2000. Craig David One of Southampton's most famous sons, Craig David shot to fame after providing the lead vocals on fellow nominee The Artful Dodgers 1999 hit Re-Rewind and the crowd say Bo Selecta Sorry but I can't read that song title without saying it like that His smooth brand of garage influenced R&B paved the way for four top tens from his debut album Born To Do It including classics such as Fill Me In and Seven Days. The album sold 8 million units worldwide and David also picked up the awards for Best R&B Act and Best Single for Fill Me In at the 2000 ceremony. The album also did well in the US, peaking at number 11 on the Billboard chart, and in 2000's second album Slicker Than Your Average continued his hot streak, with four more UK top tens and a gold certification in the States. Momentum began to slow slightly with third album The Story Goes dropping in 2005, and by 2007's Trust Me it was beginning to grind to a halt. Lee France's TV caricature of him on the comedy show Bo Selector didn't help things and anyone who was on a school playground in the mid to late 2000s will remember Craig David almost becoming a running joke. Who's Craig David? I've broken down whilst I'm tall. Can I use your toilet? After releasing his least commercially successful album to date, 2010's covers project Signed, Sealed, Delivered, he retreated to Miami and kept a relatively low profile. The singer was to have the last laugh however, managing arguably the best comeback that the UK urban music scene has witnessed. In 2015, during a Corrupt FM set on BBC Radio 1 Extra, David gave an impromptu performance of Fill Me In over the instrumental of Jack U and Justin Bieber's hit Where Are You Now, which became an instant viral sensation. Capitalising off the hype, he released the big nasty feature in When The Baseline Drops the following November, which gave him his first top 10 single in over 8 years. The subsequent album, Following My Intuition, saw him return to the top of the album charts, and 2018's The Time Is Now reached number 2. The latter included the top 5 single I Know You with Bastille, and his 2020 feature on KSI's Really Love also saw him pick up a number 3 entry. Later that year, he was even awarded an MBE for services to music in the Queen's New Year's Honours list. Everyone loves an underdog, and Craig David's story of young superstar to laughing stock to certified legend is one that we might be unlikely to see again. 2001. So Solid Crew. Now, it's impossible to unpack absolutely everything that's happened to So Solid Crew since 2000, but I will try and give a brief overview. Beating the likes of Mystique, DJ Pied Piper and the Masters of Ceremonies and Breakaway So Solid Faction Oxide and Neutrino, London Garage Collective So Solid Crew picked up the 2001 award for Best Newcomer. After coming together on Pirate Radio, So Solid released a string of top 10 singles including the platinum smash hit 21 Seconds, which went straight in at number 1, selling over 100,000 units in its first week alone. The following album They Don't Know reached the top 10, and they also picked up the award for Best Garage Act at the 2001 Mobiles, as well as Best Video at the Brit Awards for 21 Seconds. Sophomore album's second verse dropped in 2003, and while it didn't enjoy the same level of success as their debut, it still provided a couple of top 20 singles for the crew, and helped solidify their status in the mainstream. With success came controversy however, and with the number of members ranging anywhere from 19 to 30, trouble seemed to follow them everywhere. A 2001 tour had to be cancelled due to a series of violent incidents including the death of a fan and a shooting at the London Astoria which left two injured, Asher D was jailed for 7 months after a loaded gun was found in his car, G-Man got 4 years for carrying an illegal weapon, Carl Morgan was sentenced to 30 years for murder, while Mega Man was cleared of wrongdoing in the same incident but not before having his throat slashed in jail whilst the rating trial. Another shooting took place outside a So Solid gig in 2003 which left one dead and another wounded as well as various other incidents and brushes with the law. 
Unsurprisingly, this derailed the Source Solid train somewhat, and although they never officially broke up, the band pretty much stopped existing for a while. What happened to the members of Source Solid crew is a video for another day, but in short, Lisa Mafia went on to have a pretty successful solo career for a few years, as to a lesser extent did Romeo and MC Harvey, who also married Alicia Dixon before cheating on her with a pop idol contestant, AM Sniper, or Ames as he's now known, went on to produce for the likes of Afro B, Wiley in the game, and after having a short lived solo career of his own, Asha D, now Ashley Walters, became a hugely successful actor, starring in Get Rich or Die Trying, Top Boy and Bulletproof. So Solid Crew did briefly reunite in the early 2010s and dropped the greatest hits album, and their legacy does live on, but it doesn't look like they'll be returning to the forefront anytime soon. 2002, Ms. Dynamite. Another artist who was discovered through the pirate radio circuit, Crawley born and Kentish town raised Ms. Dynamite, came up by effortlessly mixing delicate singing and aggressive garage MC. Her 2002 debut, A Little Deeper, saw her link up with producer Salam Remy and expand her sound into contemporary reggae, rap and R&B while still keeping in touch with her garage roots. It went platinum, spawned three top 20 singles including the anthemic It Takes More and the infectious Dynamite he again, sorry, and won the 2002 Mercury Prize. Ms Dynamite was not only crowned best newcomer at the year's Mobos, but she also picked up the gongs for best single It Takes More and UK Act of the Year. 2005 follow-up album Judgment Days, which featured a track with Lil Wayne, didn't achieve the same level of sales or critical plaudits, and the following year she released mixtape A Little Darker with her younger brother Akala. After that, Dynamite went on hiatus, appearing on the odd TV or radio show. Although we haven't had an album since, she has blessed us with a few guest verses, most notably on Katie B's Lights On and DJ Fresh's Dibby Dibby Sound, both of which reached the top 5 in the UK. In 2018, she too was awarded with an MBE by the Queen for services to music. There's no word on whether we'll be getting new solo material from Dynamite anytime soon, but she's definitely considered as a pioneering artist who helped bring the flourishing UK underground scene to the forefront of the mainstream in the early 2000s, and I think her legend status is pretty well earned. 2003, Big Brothers. Now, so far in this video, it can be argued that each of the recipients we've mentioned are certified legends of the UK music scene. I'm not entirely sure the same can be said for 2003 winners Big Brothers. Brought together in London by producer Fingers as a softer, more commercially viable answer to So Solid Crew, hopefully without the legal troubles, the group's six members also included former Mobo Best Unsigned Act winner Sharice. Signed by Sony, they released the debut single New Flow in October 2002, which became a worldwide hit, reaching number one in Australia, New Zealand and Norway, as well as number three in their native UK. Characterised by their big circus-like production and American accents, their first album, also called New Flow, was certified platinum and birthed a further three UK top tens for the group, leading them to beat a fresh-faced Dizzy Rascal to the 2003 Best Newcomer Award. They also shared the award for Best UK Act that year with Covent Punjabi MC. The group began to fracture just a year later however as member Flawless was sacked from the group after being stopped in LAX airport with two grams of weed on him. The lead single to their second album Yours Fatally didn't do as well as expected and they were subsequently dropped from their label. The band then split but reformed as a quartet in 2006 also dropping Dion who became a vocal coach. They finally released second album Re-Entry in 2007, but it failed to have much of an impact. By this point, the remaining girl members of the group had already formed the duo Booty Love, who went on to have five UK top 20 hits including Shine and Boogie Tonight, while the two remaining male members of Big Brothers also formed a group Party Dark, but didn't have the same level of success as their female counterparts. Occasionally reuniting for tours like S Club 3's 2012 stint in Australia or to support Peter Andre 5 and East 17, Big Brothers, despite admittedly having some bangers, can't quite be put in the same echelon as the other winners of the Newcomer Award. 2004, Estelle. Hammersmith's own Estelle was to take home the newly renamed Best UK Newcomer Trophy in 2004 on a night that saw both Kanye West and Jamelia take home three awards apiece. While working at record shop Real Deal, Estelle was encouraged to pick up a mic and work with London legends Rodney P and Black Twang. Mixtape series The Heat helped her build a following and in 2004 her debut album The 18th Day dropped. The album featured guest appearances from Mega Man, Talib Kweli and John Legend who she met through a chance encounter with Kanye West in LA. 
Her unique mix of rap, R&B and soul saw the album hit number 35 on the charts and singles 1980 and Free both reached the top 20. She was then signed to Legend's new homeschool label under Atlantic Records and four years after her debut, second album Shine saw her return with a stellar list of collaborators including Will I Am, Mark Ronson, CeeLo Green, Swizz Beats and famously Kanye West on the international hit American Boy, which gave Estelle her first and so far only UK number one, as well as a Grammy Award for Best Rap Song Collaboration. Nominated for a Mercury Prize and certified gold in the UK, Shine would be the undoubted commercial peak of Estelle's career. In 2009, she announced that she was working on her third album entitled All of Me. Two initial singles, Freak featuring Cardinal Official and Fall in Love were released but underperformed to the point that they were left off the album when it was finally released in 2012. Despite this, All of Me became her highest debut on the Billboard chart, although it didn't make any chart impact at all in the UK. Estelle had also branched into other work, modelling for Naomi Campbell's Fashion for Relief runway show and voicing Garnet in the animated series Steven Universe. Three-part EP series Love and Happiness preceded 2015's True Romance and 2018's Lovers Rock saw her venture into a more reggae-influenced sound. Now the host of The Estelle Show on Apple Music and always expanding to her list of guest appearances, Estelle has carved out quite the career for herself since that mobile win all those years ago. So there we have it. The mobile best newcomers of the early 2000s. Do you think the awards went to the right people? Did these newcomers become legends or did they flatter to deceive? Let us know in the comments, subscribe to Ride and if you want to see what the mobiles were saying in the second half of the decade, make sure you subscribe and the video will be out real soon. Watch one of these. Watch one of these. Yeah? Go on, click one. I'm, I can't wait forever, click one.